What's up guys, welcome back for another video. I'm RCP, let's go! So today I'm gonna to talk about MRCP. When it comes to MRCP, it's divided in two. Either you are imaging the bile duct system or the pancreatic duct. So in today I'm gonna to show you how we plan the bile duct system because if we have cases, we don't do all in one. Either we do the bile duct or the pancreatic because the protocol is different. So I'm gonna show you today how we perform this and how you can plan and let me give you some tips and tricks and also go deep into every, every details so you can avoid the pitfalls follow me and i'll show you all right guys let's get started we are currently at the 1.5 touchless scanner i'm using a body 18 channel combined with 32 channel so we're starting out with the localizer right here this localizer is built with the three plane localizer, giving me all the planes, transversal, coronal, and sagittal. And this localizer is a free breeding. And I know places which they do different localizers, which I mean in terms of a breath hold and a free breeding. But uh, in my program, I only do this as a free breeding because I don't need a breath hold. Doing the first sequence as a haze coronal, as a breath hold, because they would, this would give me the possibilities to see top and the bottom to the liver. So I just position this like that in the coronal plane. And then I do a manual breath hold because uh, I really recommend a manual breath hold. From my point of view, I have really more control of the patient and I can talk to them and keep motivating them to uh, do the breath holds compared to automatically voice. But this is all up to you. In my opinion, in abdominal imaging, there's not many breath hold sequences compared to a cardiac. So just have that in mind. So when the coronal is ongoing now, I'm doing a fine position of the transversal while I'm waiting for the first coronal. The coronal first brief breath hold is very helpful for me because then I can see the top and the bottom of the liver like this. So I see here I can decrease a little few slices, which means I will save scan time and short breath hold for the patient. So I'm going from 33 to 30. And then do another breath hold. And then I'm going to make the T1 with the spoiled grid in outer phase ready. So I'm just copying the haze transversion, which I already did the position on. So that's the haze ongoing there in the light window. I like to have the copper graphics on just to uh, move all the boxes all together during the exam. So this is just, I feel like it's very effective. So also here I see I can go from 72 slices to 64 because uh, the liver from the top to the bottom is not that long. So I can save a little bit scan time, which in terms of short breath holds for the patient. So I apply for that one, it's also a breath hold. And the next one we go for the tick slaps. Many sites do this as a radio views, but uh, I, usually do, I usually do this as a four tick slaps. I wanna explain to you why. And also see many slides do this uh, tick slap later in the protocol, but uh, I really recommend to do it early because you can get need of it. Uh, show, I will show you soon how, why. So I'm looking for the common bile duct right there. I'm scrolling up and down on the haze sequence and checking the common bile duct right there. And I position direct coronal there. And then a fine position in the isocenter in the coronal plane. But I'm gonna show you here right now that uh, the red arrow as you see in there is the common bile duct. And the, the ring, red ring there is uh, that's the area I want to Highlight, I want to do a direct coronal. That's the starting point of my first thick slap. So I do a breath hold on that one. The next one I'm gonna do, uh, this is the T1 way that uh, finish now. Just gonna check the image quality. Seems fine, covering from top to the bottom. 
So let's continue on the thick slab. The next thing I want to do is I want to do this as an oblique coronal. So I angle it like this until it breaks. There you go. It's more than 45 degrees, that's why. So I'm positioning into the common battle dock like that while I'm waiting for the first coronal thick slab. So that's the first one. So I'm using this one now to position my oblique coronal. So I try to be in the same height of the field of view. So it will look good from the four images I'm going to do. Scan on that one. And then I do a sagittal. Also looking forward to be in the middle there. And I'm waiting for the next thick slab. Doing a breath fall now. So that's the new one. And then I reposition it in there. Trying to be in the middle of the common bile duct. And my fourth one is a free breathing. So I just wrote the free breathing there. And this one is just free breathing. So there you go. And I can explain to you why. So this is the difference between the breath one and the free breathing. It's not easy to see the, the big difference here. So that's why I also made this one. This is from another case. So check the difference from the free breathing. This is free breathing. This is breath one. Free breathing, breath fall. The position of the free breathing is different here. So I'm going to need that for positioning my thin slices. So the first thing I do is that I copying the oblique coronal. Many people do this as direct coronal, but I like to do this as oblique coronal. I'm going to explain to you later in this video why we do this. So I'm copying that one and then I'm checking the free breathing because you have to remember that whenever you're doing a free breathing sequence you need, you need to take a look at the free breathing sequences you can't position a free breathing on a breathful sequence because then then you will miss the anatomy so i'm just checking around like that i'm covering everything and then i'm checking my free breathing localizer to position my navigator I see in there, I'm trying to position this in two planes, half of it in the lung and half of it in the liver. Like that. So the next thing and the last thing I'm going to check is that my field of view is at the isocenter. I'm trying to position my field of view isocenter at the, at the bile duct. So I'm lifting this a little bit up and I'm going to explain to you why. So this is the reason if you, the first image you see here is, is scanned very low. So you have a very much of the stomach with you and image number two is scanned at the isocenter. First, first look at these images, it looks great, right? It's not that bad, but if you zoom in the images a little bit like this, let's zoom the other one. Now take a look at the peripheral area of the bile duct. There's a lot of vessel here now, so uh, but you see the signal void right there. So if you have a peripheral branches, you will get a signal void in the peripheral branches, which is not great. So uh, this is why you should position at the isocenter, something to have in your mind. So this is Navi Navigator. What I'm looking here is that I'm half the, the black area is the lung and the other gray area is the liver. And I'm having a great peak here, instructing the patient to breathe normal and uh, have a consistent breathing pattern. It's not always easy, but you should not have pattern uh, navigate like this. It's this inconsistent breathing pattern. It's falling asleep and uh, breathing in and out inconsistent. So if you have a curve like this, it just should stop and uh, give a new instruction to the patient. Because this not only take long time, but you only get suboptimal images. So let's check the images. This is the images with thin slices in the 3D mode. 
I'm scrolling up and down here just to check and then you have the MIP you have a MIP thin the thing I want to show you here is that take a close, closer look at the bile duct which is bright and the vessels which is gray and the liver is dark so we build a sequence like this with a TE of around 400 compared to uh, a standard one which is around seven to eight hundred the main point is that i feel like we get a good uh, raw native images like this but uh, the mips looks different from the old one which is a uh, high te but uh, compared to the native ones i find the te on 400 much better less noise and uh, clear images this is uh, something uh, we uh, landed on and uh, have that in mind if you are struggling with having good uh, native images. Either way, in the end, uh, we should rely on the native images and not on the MIPS. The MIPS are great to look at, but the native is the one you should look at. So in the end uh, of my protocol, I just wanted to show, this is not a standard, it's just additional today here. I just want to show you that you also can do a breath hold if you are struggling with uh, thin slices because of a bad breathing pattern and the patient can't brief consistent but there's a very good breath holder so this one takes around 15 seconds and i'm just copying the oblique coronal doing head feet here and i'm just checking the positioning of it so now i'm using the sagittal breath hold to check the position because this one i'm planning now is a breath hold compared to the other thin slice which is a free breathing so that's why I'm using the free breathing sagittal but now I'm using the breath hold. So let's check the images. So let's check the images in the 3D mode. So the upper row is the free breathing respiratory triggering and the low row is the breath hold. And then you see here the native images compared to MIP next to it. I'm just scrolling through this. The first thing that came in my mind is that even though it's a breath hold, it's not that bad. And uh, not all the patients can do uh, consistent breathing. So having this in in, uh, under your sleeve is uh, great just to have an additional if you are struggling with uh, getting good images so the last thing I want to talk about I want to do a recap on what we are doing here so when we're doing the thick slices we're doing is very early in the protocol and our protocol is built up with a few breath holes in the beginning so the patient can get used to do the breath holes during the exam and we're also doing the manual one because the manual voice I feel I have more control of the patient and then you can talk to them and motivate them during the exam this is just something you can have in your mind so we're doing direct corner after the we're looking for the common bile duct so we get the first image like this and then I do oblique coronal so I'm using the first image to position the oblique coronal and then I have a direct sagittal so I'm using the oblique coronal to get the position of the sagittal and then I have a free breathing the reason for free breathing is that I know exactly how many slices I need when I'm positioning the thin slice sequence so I'm not like oh maybe you should have more slices so we add up a bit more slices because if you add up it slices just to be sure you're covering the whole bile duct this will increase the scan time and increases the chance of getting suboptimal images. So when it comes to the thin slices, why are we doing this the oblique coronal? So I will try to explain to you this. Uh, if you have a patient like this and you want to cover the whole bile duct, so you're doing the direct coronal, yeah, you will get good images uh, covering from the, from the front to the back, like the left and the right branches duct and uh, the pancreatic duct is also comes along here but we need many more slices to covering this so they would add up in scan time and the reason we're doing this oblique is that we can have fewer slices and we are only focused on the bile duct 
So our examination are either focused on the bile duct or focused on the pancreatic duct or pancreas. You can see here you have fewer slices. So fewer slices means also bigger chances to have good images and short scan time. Because if you have many slices and uh, the patient needs to be consistent in seven, six, seven minutes, chances to get suboptimal images increases. We highlight the bile duct, not the pancreas. And if you have a cases like this, which you need to cover a lot, sometimes it's, uh, also we do a direct transversal, just to like looking directly into it and covering it in, in um, the whole uh, bile duct. So for us, the peripheral branches is important in our cases. So we need to see the peripheral branches. I know there are many pitfalls when it comes to positioning and being uh, very careful with the navigator, positioning slices and so on and so on. So this is just how we do it. And I hope these few tips will be helpful for you for positioning the builder. So this is the end of my video. I hope you find it uh, valuable with the tips and tricks and just try to avoid the pitfalls. Remember, there are many ways to get to the same goal. And I know the different sites out there do this differently. So adapt what is useful for you. And please uh, give a comment down below if you have any questions. And if you like this video, do not forget to give a thumb up because that really means a lot. And in the end, do not forget to subscribe because uh, and put in the notification bell. And then we get a ding ding whenever I'm posting new stuff. So you will keep to be updated with my videos. At this time of the coronavirus, please stay safe. Until next time, I see you around. Peace out.